some more Benoni. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. So our lesson is interactive for uh, those of you who are new to our lesson. Uh, we have been seeing games in the Benoni for a while now. I think, uh, well, this is our third stream on this, uh, but I think it's actually our fourth game, right, Sophie? <laughs> We have seen one uh, one game of Shuba. Yeah, I remember that name. Yeah, the Romanian who plays the Benoni. Yes, exactly. <laughs> who played the Benoni. Now he doesn't play that much. So as usual, we are going to start with uh, an exercise. So we uh, get warmed up. <laughs> so here it is black to play. Um, well, it's also a classical game. We usually see classical oh, games... Oh, I just need to flip the board. Just one moment. Oh, I'm sorry. It's flipped I'll for flip me, but maybe it, it didn't just... Flip now. Yeah. Okay, so black to play in this position. Black to play in this position. This is also coming from a classical game. Uh, game of sucks with the black pieces who also play the Benoni. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I've noticed that you always put something tactical <laughs> for the warm-ups. So... Yeah. I should maybe look at something tactical. Um, okay, let's just see. So it's just the best move for white, for black. For here. black, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So it's just the best move. Oops. For white. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just trying to open all the chats. So if you guys heard, heard uh, my echo, yeah. that was <laughs> that was me opening uh, the rest of the of the chat here. Mm. It's easy. Yes, the first one is not very difficult. Are they King saying Fisher. it's not very difficult? Uh, I don't know if it's a question or <laughs> it's just... Our a problem is <laughs> what order. Okay. okay, so there are multiple moves we need to make. <laughs> Move okay, order. Let's yeah. See, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, I see a, a sort of motive here. Mm -hmm. um where the um, no, I just need to I'm, I'm, I'm maybe I'm, I, it, that helped me a little bit that comment <laughs> and I was thinking about taking on c3 yeah with the idea of like getting the bishop out of protecting e3 so that we could then take on g3 and mm -hmm. play queen e3 and then both giving a check and attacking the bishop and c3 yeah um so i think yeah maybe that's what uh king <laughs> sure who, who that's wrote correct that yeah chat? king fisher can i give that yeah i think i got i think i that actually helped just um, yes <laughs> that, that actually problem. that helped a lot well so you guys can taking on c3 uh, is that the way it seems yes. like forcing maybe even taking on g3 first taking on g3 was what happened in the game but just okay. i was just <laughs> that was your idea yes that's true just a quick uh, answer to uh, the, some questions here in the chat. Yes, I do reply to the chat. I'm going to be reading them. Sophie is also going to be reading your comments. Um, and yes, please do give I ideas. I do whenever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very helpful. <laughs> it's a uh, it's an interactive lesson. So we are Sophie is my mm. student, but she has agreed to have our lesson streamed, and now now she's accepting. Uh, solutions from you guys just some help <laughs> i only agreed to have it streamed so that i can get help aha <laughs> uh <-huh>, now i know <laughs> okay so let me show you knight g3 this is what happened in the game well now the the question becomes really important if we can first take on c3 right yeah for sure That's we what can I wanted um, to do my only idea is that the difference could be that white doesn't have to take on g3. Like if we take on c3, let me just draw some arrows here. Let me see how. If we take uh, bishop takes and knight g3, the difference would be that here white doesn't have to take, right? And then we have given up our dark square bishop. Uh, yeah. And maybe the, uh, there's some compensation there if there isn't anything uh, happening. We can see that line. Uh, as well. Let me just show it. Let's see bishop c3 first. Bishop takes and knight g3. So here the only thing is that uh, this is not the most forcing um, continuation, right? So here white has 
could have ideas. Taking on c5 is one of them, one that I could be thinking of, because the pawn on b5 might be subject to some attacks. Then d6 if you take with the d-pawn. And, well, even if uh, white doesn't get any material back, there's for sure will be some compensation. So let's just see this. Sophie, can you see the board? I'm just making sure that uh, this yeah, is Yeah, with the knight on g3. Yeah? Yeah, okay. I see the board. Great. So taking on c5 here, and we have two ways of taking, right? If you take with the d-pawn, then I'm going d6. It's probably becoming complicated yeah. after this. And if so you then maybe taking with the knight. Yeah, but then I have this queen d4. Ah, uh, yeah, that looks. That looks annoying. That's no? Queen d4 is losing. <laughs> that might be losing uh, material. Hmm? Yeah, maybe. Queen d4. Yeah, so there is a difference between the two. Uh, Kingfisher was absolutely right. The move order does matter. So... Ah, it does. <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, oh, but in a game, you, you, you would calculate in a game, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, of, yeah, of course. So here... Maybe uh, not in, in a Blitz game. Not in a Blitz game, but, <laughs> uh, but then just remember to go with the most forcing uh, move order. <laughs> yeah. So let's see knight takes g3. We are just going to see the tactic here, not the full game. And here, of course, if white takes, uh, you are right, Sophie. Bishop takes c3. And when bishop takes, now we are getting our bishop back, so that's uh, all right. Yeah, and we are a pawn up here. King h2, suppose queen takes c3. Everything's great. Yeah, everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great uh, Benoni now. So yeah. here, well, but White does have uh, something here. He doesn't need to lose material. What can White play? Come on, let's see your calculation skills. Ah, can... No. <laughs> that doesn't work. Or, or does it? Which one? No, it doesn't. I was, no, I was looking at taking an h8, but that doesn't seem... That just loses another piece, I think. Um... Kingfisher's got it right. It's, it's about the... Kingfisher? Yeah. I think you have a great ally there i think i have i found her uh, very good in the chat hello let me Nine, win you, yes you, and we are reading what the about chest, we are reading the chest 24 chat as well we have a question ah, here is there also on youtube okay because i'm looking at twitch right now taking on b5 yeah that seems to be um an idea just because if the knight is going to, then it's not hanging on yeah. on c3 and then we can take the knight on g3 afterwards yeah knight takes b5 is what happened uh in the game and in this case well, we are not winning material, white has gotten back this pawn, but then we are left with a superior position here. We have a better structure, yeah. better pieces, and black went on to win this. Okay. But anyway, it's a nice tactic to keep in mind, because even if you don't win material, you are still going to play knight hg3 and get this nice structure, right? Yeah, I think this is something... Uh, we have to go for. All right, great. So I hope you guys are warmed up. <laughs> warmed up for uh, <laughs> for the game, for the actual game. game. Yes. So let's see the game now. I'm just oops. I'm just going to add it here, which is a game between Nidorf and Timan. Timan with the black pieces, mm. and this is happening again. So let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Hello to everybody just joining now. We are about to start uh, the main game of today. We have been warming up, waiting for everybody to to join our lesson. So let's see this. D4, knight of six. Well, Sophie, I forgot to ask you about your move order. Is this the move order that you use in the Benoni uh, to get into the Benoni? Uh, it depends. I actually uh, switch it up a little bit, but I, I think most often I play C5 straight away. Mm. I okay. think it seems a little bit more like provocative. Yeah. Uh, so C f C five after C four in this position. Yeah. And then E six. Yeah, and then E six, and then uh, taking and E six, and yeah, exactly. Okay. It's. I think it's. It's gonna end up being the same in most cases. 
In most cases, yes. Um, yeah. C5. Well, uh, there are some move orders where white can play e4, but that's not your case if you have a knight on f6 uh, from, yeah. from the beginning. So here d5, and now we yeah. have taking and d6, and we have seen uh, this position quite a lot. Here knight c3 and g6. Yep. And here is where white has options. Today we will see knight d2. Um, we have seen e4, this was Shuba's game, yeah. that we saw a while ago. Do you remember what we play here? Um, do we not continue with the bishop g7? Well, here we were looking we at something. When they play e4... Uh, oh, oh no, this is where we play a6, right? Yeah. To prevent the bishop from going to, to b5 and yeah, yeah, I remember now. Yes, you are almost right. Um, here, when they play e4, remember that we have this extra idea of putting the bishop on g4 and pinning the knight. Uh, so, but if we play bishop g4 first, do you remember what white plays here? Why doesn't bishop g4 uh, immediately work? This is not about bishop b5. No, uh, I no. think you are confusing with the things yeah, that we I were seeing last week, where <laughs> there was an idea with bishop b5, yeah. And the king had to go to f8, but that's not it. Yeah. I'm going to look in the chat just to see if... Uh, <laughs> I have no about idea. B Bishop b5. Mm, I have no idea about this theory. Let's see if there's somebody on YouTube. No. <laughs> I'm just going I'm to, on my own here. I'm just I'm going to own. refresh your memory then. Yeah, please. Thank you. <laughs> there was this idea that if you go Bishop g4, the problem is that here, um, well, what do you want to do with Bishop g4? Pin the knight and eventually take it. Yeah. Yeah. So what white can do here is Queen a4. They have this square for the queen, uh, yes, and then course. the knight moves away. Yeah. Knight d2, and then our bishop on g4 is a bit yeah, awkward. Stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then on, but on, um, on queen a5, a4, yeah. could you then have gone back with the bishop? Yes, bishop d7 can be played, but then queen b3. And then bishop, yeah, okay. Queen b3 and b7 is hanging now. Yeah. So that's why here, after e4, important subtlety here, we go a6 first. Why do we go a6? Because we want to play b5, and white's usual response to this is a4. They stop us from playing b5, but then they've taken away the a4 square for the queen. So now is when we go bishop g4, and this was the game of Shuba versus Leputian that we saw uh, a while ago. Okay. So let's go back to our game then. Yeah. Well, there's also bishop f4 here. You've probably seen this move. Yeah, I've seen that uh, a few times. Yes. Um, it's, well, maybe one of the most uncomfortable to face. Bishop f4 Yeah, here. that and then when they put the knight on c4, it's pretty hard to defend d6. Yeah. Well, but Benoni has that. That sometimes... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, Sometimes the uh, son of sorrow. <laughs> son of sorrow, yeah. We will suffer until you don't. <laughs> so, well, here a4 and um, bishop g7. White is not playing e4 here because of bishop g4. This is something um, that's all right for black. But then instead of playing e4, they go h3, and then there's no bishop g4. And we'll have to castle and... Um, do something else with the bishop, no? Knight d7 without yeah. getting the bishop out at some point. But let's see knight d2, because this is a move that we haven't seen so far. Knight d2 here. And now, again, um, you have, well, you could play bishop g7, or you could go knight d7. What would you play here, Sophie? I'm, I'm pretty sure I would just put my bishop on g7. 
just bishop g7. Yeah. Well, here we see the first subtlety of this game. Uh, because yeah. Timan, instead of playing bishop g7, which can be played, but if you remember, one of the th first things that I told you uh, about the Benoni is that you need to be ready to face knight c4. And we had a couple of ways to do that. Oh, sorry. You just feel hot when you said that. You said, <laughs> I didn't hear what you say after. Uh, I need to be ready to do what? To face knight c4. To meet knight c4. Ah, uh, yeah. Knight c4, yeah. So we had a few ideas on how to do that. Um, knight c4 was either met by... Hold on, let me just go back here. Knight c4 was either met by uh, bishop a6 when we had b6 play. Yeah. Then there was this possibility of going knight e5 if we could. And then there was the idea of going knight b6 if knight e5 was not available. And, well, not available because we don't want to take on e5 with a pawn. We want to be able to recapture with a piece. So and this that's is why, because I was thinking about playing a move like a6 to play b5, mm. but then maybe by putting the pawn on a6, we're taking away a potential square for the bishop. Yeah, you're basically keeping flexibility here if you keep the yeah. pawn on a7 for a little longer. You're probably going to play a6 at some point, it's one of the ideas, but you'll see that here black keeps it uh, flexible. Um, yeah. he, he delays a6. So in this position, knight d7. And that's the idea. Now now we understand why knight d7 and not bishop g7 right away. Because now if knight c4, what will we play? We will put the knight on b6. Yes, we will put the knight on yeah. b6. So there's a question from King Fisher if uh, we need to meet knight c4 right away. Um, because otherwise, why would we play a4 and secure the knight? Um, that might happen, a4, a5, but one of the things is that if you play bishop c g7 first, knight c4, uh, you're, go you're going to have some problems with d6. So you'll first need to defend this pawn and then get the knight out on d7. You have to waste some more moves. Queen c7 cannot be played because of knight b5 all the time, right? So you will have to play probably a6 first, queen c7 and knight d7. So we are keeping this flexible by playing knight d7 first. We are keeping the options of getting the queen out uh, later and first the pieces. Yeah. So I find that Benoni is really an opening where you have to be very careful about the move order. And flexible, no? Yeah. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. But that's why we are seeing some games and not theory because uh, yeah. that's, why, that's how you understand the ideas. And then you can go ahead and learn the theory. But we're, you're not just going to learn moves. That's the thing about uh, yeah. theory. If you learn moves, you're probably going to forget them. <laughs> but if you learn ideas, it's easier to, to remember everything. So white goes e4 here. Yeah. Now bishop g7. And everything's yes. normal now. Bishop e2. Castles. Castles. And here we are going to see rook e8 in this position. Yeah. And not a6. I think it's almost play almost always played in this position there's also a6 that also looks natural a6 a6 yeah. can be played but you'll see that many times they keep this uh, move for later just in case you're not going to play it maybe you play b6 and bishop a6 or you're just not going to need it and then you're not really weakening this square b6 so after you play a6 remember that we've seen these ideas where um b6 becomes weak yeah so we keep this for later and we'll see if we if we are going to need a6 but it can be played so i'm going to show you uh this idea now so we can also do this rook e8 and there was one thing that i wanted to show here that after knight e5 uh, this has been played in many games here what you need to remember is that f4 is something that you shouldn't be afraid of. Okay, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but let's see why, no? <laughs> yeah, let's see why. So the knight goes to g4. That, that makes, makes sense. Makes sense. We want to play knight e3 next. Yeah. So what can white do to defend this? There are, well, two moves besides taking on g4. Putting the knight on c4. Yeah. And knight f3, right? Yeah. So let's see first by c4, which seems more active, 
What's going to happen after knight c4? This is a question for you. For everybody watching, what happens after knight c4? be able to take an e4 hmm, yeah uh, and then play bishop f5 and then bishop f5 but, um, and bishop d4 is something that king fisher is suggesting that's also an idea bishop d4 check second e4 yeah bishop, yeah bishop d4 taking on d6 uh would we looking we are looking <laughs> for black here it's black yeah, to play. Black white to has win. just played knight c4 he cannot take on d6. Yeah, that's in some idea. H4. Let's see. Oh, that also seems fun. Queen h4, yes, that can be played. We've, we have seen so many ideas with queen h4 and the problems on the square f2 and the dark squares. Yeah. I need to also look at the YouTube chat. Maybe there are. Let's see what the YouTube chat Sorry. has to say. They say happy birthday. It's, to whom? It's, none, it's no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so nice. Thank you. Um, take, thank you. Uh, taking on e4 with the knight or knight, knight h2 is also knight a suggestion. g4. It's it's already there. Knight taking on h2 is also suggested. Ooh. Knight e4 Can't and bishop really... d4 as well. Yeah, I think, feel like knight e4 is um, might be the way to go here. It is uh, yes. But yes. you'd probably because need to calculate so slightly things. more than yeah. that. <laughs> I know. Taking an e4 and he will of course take back with the knight. Mm -hmm. And then we have to calculate. <laughs> uh, so I was looking at bishop f5, but maybe he can just protect the knight and then we can't play. Uh, we can't. I don't think we can keep uh, that we can threaten it more times that it can be defended uh take take i'm just gonna try making the the arrows making the okay arrows, go ahead if i can do that okay so take 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 okay i can't make the arrows for white side maybe um, if i make them like this no i'm not sure why not oh yeah maybe like this yeah it works and then then maybe if you play queen h4, the problem is he can maybe take on g4, and then I feel like we we don't have any knights left, and I think that would be a shame. <laughs> and we're not going to take mate without that knight. So maybe then giving the check here, putting okay. the oh, I think I have it. I think my, and then the king has to go in the corner, and then we can take on. Um, h2 yes and because i was just going to say that the youtube chat uh, also <laughs> had found it, it? Oh, yeah maybe but i Knight found it myself even though i was late yeah then King yeah H1. <laughs> i was actually going to tell you to look at all the candidate uh, moves in that position after ah, okay. knight ac4 and remember yeah. uh, to start with the most forcing ones now with the checks uh, bishop d4 looks like uh, the most forcing one and then you see from there hmm? yeah that's a good so, way to Company. Yeah, just to have some order in your in your mind, the most. Yeah. So let's see now. Knight e4 takes bishop d4 check, king h1. Let's see this one. Oh, I don't have it on my board. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I don't think it's on the. May oh, sorry, it is there. It's, it's yeah, there now. Yeah, I just refreshed yeah. it. Yeah. So now knight takes h2. Very strong. Very strong move here. Yeah. Because we have seen this idea of queen h4 mate, which is what you guys are trying to do here. If king takes, there is queen h4. So the only move left is bishop e3. But this is also really, really bad for white. You could take on f1. Uh, there's also queen h4 just to include more pieces. Yeah. And then you can take on f1 now, later. Or oh, uh, play uh, knight f3 if, if it's allowed. 
Yes, if it's allowed, of course. We want yeah. to play knight f3, they have to go king, H king g1 here. And now is when we can trade a couple of pieces and take on f1. Taking on e3 looks good, because we force these pieces all on, onto the e-file, we might use it. Take on f1, and now bishop f5 is a great threat. So knight f1, bishop f5 again with a lot of pressure. The f4 is hanging, the f4 pawn, the knight on e4 is going to be pinned for a, for a long time. So yeah. so that's the that's the idea here that and we're not even really behind on material. We're anymore. not behind in material anymore now because we've taken a, a few pawns and we're going yeah. to take some more. Yeah. So knight g4 here, knight c4. Uh, someone's asking if here after knight e4 if bishop f5 is an idea. On bishop f5, they can take on g4. That is the problem with bishop f5, bishop g4, and the pin is gone. Yeah, we have to yeah, decide. Yeah, that was on... what I, I looked at this uh, first, mm. and yeah, it's, it looks good, but it's not quite working. Not quite working. Yeah, we have to take one of the pieces, and then white saves the other. Yeah, please please validate taking on d d5 wait taking on d5 uh, here after knight c4 let me just get rid of all the arrows oh the, the mouse is in my face again Luca. <laughs> i'm sorry um, it's okay. i'm really sorry about that <laughs> it's not supposed Happened to be the there <laughs> i'm just taking it away but you guys uh you can see the board right that's where the moves happen <laughs> yeah <I think> <laughs> I'm just going to move it away and, and pay attention to that. So, wait. What about knight takes d5? When knight takes d5? Right here? And queen h4, I suppose right here, yeah? Knight takes d5? Uh, yeah. But um, I think it's the same, I right? think that has been answered, yeah? Yeah, the bishop can just take bishop on g4. just take on g4. Yeah, that's true. So, let us go back to our line. Now you know why f4 is not a great idea for white yet, because the dark squares are very important. And here, well, white will have to play knight e4. And now is when we can take on e4 and bishop f5. Yeah. yeah. Knight takes and bishop f5. Because our knight on g4 is no longer hanging. Oh, and here I had a question for you. Can you see the board, Sophie, or do I need to refresh uh, it? Do you mm, see the position after bishop f5? Yeah, now I can see it. Yeah, okay. bishop f5. So here I have oh, this. I'm just, sorry, I'm just going to open up the door. I'll be right back. Sure. So then I will uh, wait some answers for the, from the chat here. What happens after bishop d3? How does black continue in this position? Oh, and let me just take the, the mouse away from <laughs> Sophie's camera, who's not here anymore. So you guys can focus on the on the board. Bishop d3 runs into c4. Yes, you are right, Vivek. Bishop d3 um, runs yeah. into c4. Hey, Sophie, and I've just taken the, hey. the mouse away from your face. <laughs> Thank you, my. <laughs> what is uh, where's the position? Yeah, after Bishop d3, I will give you some some minutes here so you can think about a move for black as well. The YouTube chat has it already. So I was thinking about playing c4 and then rook c8 because it doesn't seem like uh, maybe she can go to b4. I'll look in the YouTube chat. <laughs> they're, they're the quick ones. Um, okay. c4, is c4. Yeah. Okay, maybe c4 is working. c4, c4 is working. So he has to take with the queen and mm -hmm. then rook c8. Yep, there's only. And two. then. Okay. The Oops. queen has to go to b4 to still protect the knight. Yeah. And then maybe just a5. a5 <laughs> looks, looks a5 all right, and yeah. then no no more squares. No more the squares. They can protect. take on d6, but this position uh, is also I mean, we take on e4. There is a guy in the chat, <laughs> the magnet 22. He said that he loved the Benoni so much that he <laughs> has a cat that's called Benoni. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really good name. I am I'm allergic to cats, but if I if I ever had a cat, I would uh, consider calling it Benoni. Giving it, 
Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, yeah. I was maybe. going to ask you if you if you are Le Fongua because I have seen Benoni in the <laughs> I have seen Benoni with the playing with the with the pieces uh, some time ago. I've seen him in a picture. He's a really cute cat. You should uh, you should look it up. <laughs> a, so a cat, it, Le Fongua. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You you see her on is it it was a her right on uh, on just twenty four. So let's go back to our uh, our game. Bishop e four is happening now, and uh, well, we are doing fine in this uh, in this position. So Sophie, you can also follow Benoni on on Instagram. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to our position here, where after knight g four, um, Black is doing great. Okay. Yes. So let's just go back to our game here and see the move rook e8, which happened in the game. We see yeah. that black is keeping things flexible here. So now a4 happened in the game. But let's see again what happens if f4, right? This is probably one of the questions. What happens if my opponent tries to get e5 and advances the center? So what are we going to do now? We cannot play knight g4. Uh, we cannot play knight g4, yeah, that's a good <laughs> observation. We can... It's probably still taking an e4, I just have to... <laughs> if we take an e4, can I do this with the arrows? Yeah, please. I'm not really, like, I can only make the move. Uh, well, I think you have, you have to click again. You have to click again on the. It's not so easy. Everybody sees uh -huh. the arrow and they think it's super it's easy, but then <laughs> you really have to. It's very advanced stuff. Okay, I'm I'm not able to make. Oh, now I, okay, it's just normal. Uh, so like this, taking for example, maybe it's better to take with the other knight, um, and then. Then giving the check, and he can go in the corner, but I feel like I'm missing some pieces in that. Yeah, it does feel like line. that. There's no queen on yeah. c2 that you can pin, everything's defended. I think you are getting too tactical for this position. Yeah, I, so. Think, so too. I think that was a bit too optimistic. <laughs> but you um, do have but, uh, I mean, an expert. Something. You do have We're an expert uh, on the Benoni in the chat, so oh, we have yes, very good suggestion me. there. Uh, in the Twitch chat. Okay, Arav can... is suggesting mm -hmm. B5 here. Uh, what else, guys, <laughs> do we have? <laughs> A6. A, no. Let me just see in YouTube. Uh, B5. I think I look briefly at B5, but I didn't know what to do if he just takes with the bishop. Yeah. I think that's a problem. Let me just take the arrow. Because if you take with one of the knights, then e5, e4 is hanging. But if he takes with the bishop, then I don't know what to do. Knight b6, uh, c4. c4, yes. Remember this typical idea? I've been telling mm -hmm. you about it from the beginning. But I have. <laughs> Remember that this pawn is a goner, Sophie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I actually do. I have played it in Blitz where I sometimes play c4. But I think I. I mostly play c4 when, I don't know. Okay, the c4 pawn is a goner. Okay, in this case, uh, you're going to get back your material, but the point of c4, uh, what you need to remember is that you're always getting, well, the idea of c4 is to get your knight on c5. Yeah. And then and there are then problems on e4. Is and then this diagonal is also a problem for white in many lines. So let's see what happens here, c4. Yeah. And let's see bishop c4. Now this is the big question. What happens in yeah. bishop c4? Because it takes the pieces we're <laughs> giving. Okay, so knight c5. Knight c5. Yeah. And then he defends, right? Rook e1. What do we do now? Do we put the queen on b6 now? Or should we play queen something Queen b6 more? is possible, yeah. Queen b6 is one yeah, of okay, the Yeah, it's move. possible. Good found a possible move. Yeah, I think it's the second best. Uh, the second best. Yeah. Well, that's good um, enough. That's good, that's good enough for me. No, no in any game, I mean, it's not, 
not just for you. Maybe there are some uh, knight g4, queen h4 ideas again, but then of course she's not on the long diagonal. Um, but what's your idea after queen b6? Suppose I go king h1? That's probably... The then it is to put the... I'm putting a knight on directly on f2. So maybe knight g4 is... Uh, knight g4 is the other candidate. It's the other, okay. okay. So uh, if I play the Benoni, no, I don't. Uh, but Sophie but is learning the Benoni. Start, you might just <laughs> integrate. it. Yes, I might just get to play the Benoni now. <laughs> So yeah. Sophie is, uh, is trying to learn the Benoni and we have started looking at games and she needs to learn the theory. But we are seeing yeah. uh, the ideas first. Yeah. So knight and g4. Benoni is son of Servo. <laughs> are we seeing how to make it less uh, son of Servo? <laughs> knight g4. Knight g4 with the idea. Well, what do you want to do? Why knight g4 right away? Because you're keeping the queen h4 idea in, in mind, right? Yeah, in case you need it there. So flexibility, no? Knight f1 now to defend. What if he plays, uh, if he plays h3? Okay, let's see what happens if he do plays we, h3. Um, what do we do? Oh, uh, we, uh, bishop d4. Yeah. Yeah, it's just winning, okay. Bishop d4 is winning. So that's why knight f1, yeah. stopping um, the threat of bishop d4. So now knight f1. But here, uh, Sophie, queen b6. And it's funny, the king cannot get out of the diagonal. What to do here? It's really a very... Bishop, um, bishop e3? Yeah, bishop e3, and then we take the pawn on b2. Right? Yeah, okay, now we got the <laughs> material back. We've got the material back, but I think that's not the most important part. No, here. I we have a lot of counterplay. Pretty, pretty decent position. Well, <laughs> if you can call this pretty decent for the Pannoni, then <laughs> your expectations are, I don't know, very high. <laughs> <laughs> this should be winning already, no? Yeah, very decent. Very decent, more than decent. Very, very decent. So let's okay. see our game then. After rook e8, let's see yeah. a4. E4 instead of f4. f4 instead of f4, here. yeah. And now yeah. we go still okay. for knight e5. Yeah. The knight belongs here. And, well, should I ask you again what happens after f3? f4, I'm sorry. Yeah, probably that's a good idea. Um, so what happens after f4? <laughs> we, we, we play the, put the e knight on d4, threatening to go knight e3. Yeah. We are going to play and knight then... g4. And then knight c4, let's see this again. What happens now? It's slightly different now, but... Um, well, now maybe, uh, is e4 hanging? g4 is also hanging, but then c4 is also hanging. Yeah, good Lots spot. Lots of are hanging, yeah. You are right. So if knight e4, okay. what Sophie is saying that if knight takes e4, she takes with the rook, and when the bishop takes on g4, she will take the knight on c4 in the end. Yeah. And this is looking great for black. Yeah. Uh, but there's one question left here. What happens if they take on g4 right away? Now the knight on c4 will not be hanging. Then we take on c3 with the knight. And? Yes. In, and then we threaten the queen? No, <laughs> I mean, no? B takes C3. <laughs> e takes C3? B, B takes C3. Uh, B takes, takes C3. C3. Ah, okay, yeah, then that's, um, okay, <laughs> hold on. We're gonna play, um, uh, that's, I kind of missed that we were already... Yes, the YouTube chat... Down a piece. The YouTube, has... they got it? Yes, uh, Arab, you're right. And Juan, yes. I will just go look. You are also right. Look. You can also start Take by that way. Bishop. Mm. I think that you're saying lots of things here. Uh, bishop d4. Bishop d4 yes. or bishop takes g4. They are similar. Both? Yeah, because you are going to play bishop takes g4 uh, afterwards. What do you want to do? Well, get the queen on. Ah, so we're going to win the exchange in after that so if we play bishop d 
Pardon? Bishop d4? Can you see the... Yeah. I'm, I'm playing the move. Yeah, I can, board. but what if you play something in between? If you play uh, bishop e3 instead? Yeah, that's a good question. What happens after bishop e3? You know you'll have to answer it yourself. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't have it asked. <laughs> should have just accepted your... <laughs> um, after bishop e3, can you refresh the board? Yeah, sorry. Because I don't have the... Um... We will. Arab is again right. Take, 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 take. Thank you, Lefong. Hope to see you again. And cheers to Benoni. <laughs> take. You said somebody had it in the chat? <laughs> I did say that. Come on, Sophie, this is easy for you. It's you are the tactician I'm gonna wait. Yeah, It is tactical. Yeah, I should have known that. I can, um, there's just so many captures. Remember, so many captures, right? yes. So, so well, many captures. So this is the most forcing because exactly. it's a check. So I'm You're gonna right. use your, your logic here. Yes, please do um, that. <laughs> see if it works. See if it works. Then yeah. he's going to, ah, then he's going to take with the knight. Yeah. And then I'm gonna take my with my knight here. Yeah. And then in the end, I can capture on e3. Great. Problem solved. It's a good way to uh, to think. Bishop takes, knight takes. Then we take here, and it's it's all the captures, right? This is the most forcing line you can think of. Yeah. And well, here it it works. So for some reason, uh, my moves are being <laughs> played back. Okay. Now rook e3, and great. Yeah, great yeah. position, pawn up, better pieces, yeah, everything uh, pieces. Yep. Everything you want here, everything you wish for. And King H1 was uh, my other question. I think uh, uh, somebody... I I'm not sure how much material we are behind right now, but... Oh no, wait, <laughs> that we can play a knight F2 and then we don't take the rook, we just play rook E1. That's a nice one. Rookie one. Yeah. Game over. Yeah. Good. So we have figured out what happens if they play knight c4. Um, the alternative would be to take on g4. But then we are fine, no? Uh, in yeah. this position. They can play knight f3. We are not winning anything in this position. But here uh, we can play another typical move. Okay. F5 to, yeah. to open the center. And this is everything we, we can wish for from the Benoni. Yeah, still good. If they, well, they, they probably have to take, uh, have the bishop on F5. So we get a very good position here. So even here, F4 seems to be too early. So let's see, mm. Queen C2. And in this position, we will see a new idea, which is G5. We haven't seen this idea so far, but it's a very interesting move that's looking to take control over the dark squares and basically stop white from playing this f4. That was a move that we had to calculate uh, all yeah. the time over again. Well, so let's it's see. It's also not defended. Right? <laughs> it's yeah. also not defended. You are right. Yeah. But uh, it's also not attacked, which is really important. <laughs> so here white yeah, played, that's true. White played rook a3 in this position. But uh, there were other games, for example, my c4 was a game played here by Sachs, same player. Yeah, we were seeing the tactics. That seems a little bit annoying. Well, um, you actually have um, um, what would you play? How would you solve this? We could take the knight. Uh, and then defend g5 yeah. in the next move. How? Defend g5, how? Bye. Maybe uh, we could go knight d7 and put, put the knight on e5. 
Yes, knight e7 is also possible. Knight g4 was the. Yeah, the okay, to I... put it on e5. Yeah, to uh... put it on e5. That is what Sachs played here. Uh, there's also knight h5, just so you know. If you want to go to f4, you can also do this. And knight yeah. g4 um, was the game, and the knight goes to e5 here. Then I see the idea of having played g5 in this position, so the knight is no going strong there. Yes, that's the, yeah. basically the point of g5. Okay, and this is uh, another question for you. What, what will we play after bishop b5? So our rook is hanging, but yeah. we have options. Which one is the best? So we can move the book to yeah. either e7 or f8. Yep. Or we can put something in between, probably the bishop, because the knight just got to such a nice square. True. Um, so those are three candidate moves that are the most like natural. Uh, maybe it's something unnatural, but I'm just going to look at those. Um, putting the book on e7 is not very good because the bishop can take on g5. That yeah. doesn't look good. So we could put it on f8, yeah. that might be okay. We can maybe play f5 in some mm -hmm. position. Or then the bishop could go to g7, which yeah. is probably... Oh, that, no, that's not so good, because then we would have to take back with the knight. And it's, uh, well, it's, it's probably not horrible, but then... You have to leave the we center. Might of time on that so i would the book to f8 i think i would play very nice sophie rook f8 is the best move here yes very nice <laughs> and why rook f8 <laughs> because exactly what sophie was saying before she wants to play f5 and we are trying to make this work um in the game they played f4 Pawn yeah. takes bishop takes and here uh, f5 uh, was not played, but it is the best move, so okay, we will just play f5 instead. Yeah, okay, here it looks like you <laughs> lose the pawn. <laughs> yes, just put it back to f8 where it belongs. Yeah, so they can win a pawn here uh, on f5, but there is a lot of compensation. I think, uh, yeah, queen h4, this is already very dangerous for white. Yeah, it also looks like the f5 pawn is not. It's not going to survive for long. No. It's true. Yeah, if g3, queen h3, and I think I'm getting my pawn back already. Yeah. And I have like these it. two strong bishops that are very important here. Okay, so this happened in a game of sucks uh, where uh, white, his opponent played here knight c4. But we are going to see a game of Timan where his opponent, Miguel Nydorf, played rook a3. So now black goes queen e7. What's the idea of rook a3? Uh, well, we want to get the rook onto the king's side. No? We have seen this yeah. uh, in other games as well. So now white goes rook e1. Notice that white is also very flexible, is not committing to any moves that weaken the position, just slightly improving. But what to do with black here? Let's try to find a plan. So, not just moves, please tell me plans. I feel just, like that's the why hardest question. Uh, <laughs> while you think I'm just going to answer a question from yeah, the challenge is 24. Uh, the idea of pulling, pushing g5 is to fix the knight on e5 and take control over the dark squares. That's why black played it earlier in the game. Hmm. How can we improve here? No? Let's just try to find... Okay, so the bishop ideas. on c8 is... Uh, we have to find somewhere for that to go. So. We can also have the rook on a8 join. Yeah. Uh, so maybe putting the bishop, um, maybe even try to exchange it for the bishop on e2. Mm -hmm. um, and then putting a rook on, 
on maybe C8 or B8 and try to maybe get to play. Also, we could go for playing B5, putting the the bishop on D7 and the rook on B8 and then play A6 and B5. Uh, it takes a little takes bit of one. time. But, um, and they will play A5, no? When you are ready for that. Yeah, okay. They will just ruin it. Right? Just, just ruin, ruin your plan. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But I, we should get the bishop out somehow and, and at least connect the rooks. Um, also, I, I kind of like still the idea of playing f5 at some point. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, how about that? But if we can, we can't, it doesn't seem too good to, I mean, of course, we can't play f5 right mm -hmm. now, but even if we could. Uh, maybe the queen shouldn't be in... Or maybe it's okay for the queen to be in the same... No, I don't really like it. To be in the same file as the rook. Um, we have some suggestions in the YouTube chat. Yeah, Someone suggesting knight g6. That's an interesting plan. To cover some more dark squares, go to f4. That could be something to play. Of course. Let's see. Knight, h5 and g4. Yeah, maybe g4 even. Intending... Knight f4, I kind of like that idea. Knight g6, knight f4 looks like a, an interesting plan that we have been seeing yeah. a lot in the Benoni. Yeah. And break the I think, center. I think g4 That's and h5. F5. Yeah, f5 was meant to break the center. And your plan, Sophie, is also possible. So that's what yeah. uh, Black played here. They played for the, for the f5 break. But here we have so many ideas, no? Yeah, Vivek is also suggesting going h5, h4. h5, h4, maybe h5, yeah. g4, no? This can... Yeah, maybe g4 that's... and h5 to to gain some more space here. Uh, also this knight g6 to get the knight to f4. And then the idea that I wanted to show you today is to go for f5. And this is yeah. really nice, knight to g4. It's really nice the way he achieves this, because f5 is not possible yet, right? Even if we play it, we are not defending enough f5. But he's got an idea. The knight on e5 is great, but the knight on f6 uh, was on the way of uh, the pawn. So we, where do we yeah. want the knight? The knight is actually headed to h6. And this so is that we how, can support f5. So we can support f5. And this is how uh, he was planning to do this. First, he played knight g6 to cover f4, as suggested before, also opened the bishop. So now with the knight on g4, um, there is um, something important in the move order, in fact, because now we do want to play bishop d4. Yeah. So this is uh, a threat here. For example, if white goes knight to g3, that was the, the point of knight f1, in fact, to go to f5, uh, then we have bishop d4. Yeah, so we are in time. Um, well, g5, uh, what, what you have to know is that it's a very interesting idea that we take all these dark squares, but remember that any pawn move also give something. So we give yeah. up the square h5 and the square f5, uh, and white will try to use them. This is what he's doing in the game with knight f1 and knight g3. So you need to pay attention and find the balance between the two, Make sure that you're not falling into a worse position that your opponent will will not just take over the light squares here. But there's no time in this game. Uh, Black knew what he was doing. So here he plays, white plays queen, sorry, queen to d1, forcing the knight away. Um, I feel like uh, white's pieces are going a little bit backwards. It does feel like moment. that, but... Uh, yeah. I was just going to say that this queen d1 maybe is perhaps not the best move because it kind of gives uh, gives up control over f5 over e4. Remember that e4 is one of the most important yeah. squares for white. So here knight h6. Yeah. And knight g3. So white is kind of in time to stop f5 because as you were saying f5 uh, will have some problem because of the queen on e7. Yeah. So we don't really, hold on. <laughs> we don't really want to play f5 right away. Well, let's see what happens, no? Let's just 
make sure that it doesn't work. Yeah. Knight takes. It seems that the bishop doesn't really have a good discovered attack because we are uh, defending everything, right? There's no bishop g4 because the rook on e1 is hanging. But white does have this move, attacking the pawn on g5. And now we see why the e4 square is so important all the time. Yeah. And what's the point? If we defend with h6, then there's this in-between move forcing our rook away, and now knight and takes g5. Yeah, now there was a good one. So we are losing some material yeah, here. Very good. Bishop d7 uh, doesn't work either, because then there will be knight takes f5, and uh, the bishop is overloaded here. Yeah. So, f5 right away uh, doesn't too work. It's too soon, so what does black do here? Just let's make some more move useful the queen, moves. Maybe. He didn't move the queen, um, but he played a6. Yeah. Useful so move, So there right? are no bishops going there. Yeah, especially after seeing the line you just showed. With bishop b5. Yeah, we can consider yeah. this a slight prophylaxis against all the, all the ideas before. And here is where white uh, makes a mistake. He plays bishop okay. b3. And can you tell me why this is a mistake? Because we get to play f5, something more concrete, maybe. Yeah. Uh, no, that that's about it. Because you get to play f5, no? <laughs> yeah. Because now the bishop is in the way of the rook. Yeah. And we get to play f5. I think a similar idea we've seen With in Shuba's game. of going f5. Remember, we have seen something similar in Shuba's game when the bishop on e3 was in the way of the white pieces. Yeah. And white had to develop on d2 instead and allow the rooks yeah. to be open. Well, the rook on a3 might want to pass, the rook on e1 is also defending against f5. Bishop e3, and now f5, and black is already there, no? Has achieved some, some ruptures, and it's not so easy for white to find uh, any more ruptures. And we were talking about these positions, that in the Benoni, what you need to make sure with black is that you have some ruptures, you have some play. Yeah. Because then if you fall in a in a bad position where you cannot do anything, your opponent will improve and yeah, that would be a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, but here, um, well, this is actually a very important moment. Let's just flip the board for a moment and try to think for a move for white. How should white play here? How should he try to find counterplay? Is the board flipped? Yes, but you're probably going to flip it. Have to flip it yourself if it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I can flip it myself like this. Okay, so I do for white in this position. Yeah. Okay. So why is the f5 break important? Because it will uh, attack white's center and create some weaknesses. The pawn on d5, for example, is one that uh, we can attack. And black pieces get active. B5 and yes. F5 are the two breaks that we usually play for. Um, I'm thinking about moving the... I, I think it's a little bit of a shame with the rook on A3. Yeah. That it's standing <laughs> over there. Um, so I would like to find a way to include it, like, yeah? Yeah, yeah, to move all the pieces on the third rank. Um, I could, of course, take the knight on f5 uh, so that I'm not losing the bishop pair. Yeah. But um, taking on f5, he will, of course, take back. Maybe I could take up some space myself by playing g4. Mm-hmm. Um, then the third ring is still open for the rook. Or... Um, is it okay if I look in the chat, the chat for a moment? <laughs> well, there are all kinds of suggestions. There is knight takes a 5 as well. Um, knight d4, I think that's meant to be e4. 
shame uh, on the rook on a8. Shame, <laughs> a8. Yeah, that's also right. I think the a rook. That's a so that's good. that's a good uh, spot there. That the shame on the rook on a8, and if you take on a5, the rook on a8 will be happy, no? Yeah, and that, the bishop true, on c8 true. is going to be also super happy. So knight yeah. takes f5 was played in the game, but is only helping black. It's not. So then we would have to. I don't know if we are we ready to give up. But then we could play um, uh, bishop h5. Uh, so to someone's the saying that the dark square bishop is more important than the knight, and I would agree with that. We see that the dark squares are very important in. In the but then we have to. <laughs> yes. Then we have to move the. The bishop, on e3. Um, bishop d2, yeah? Bishop d2, yeah. That's the best seems... move. It's not easy to it, make. It has to. No, it seems... It uh, doesn't feel good. It doesn't, but uh, this is a kind of moment that where you have to understand that knight x5 is not a move that you can play, and then you look for yeah. the alternatives, and it's, it's not so easy to find an alternative. Knight h5 loses maybe the... Maybe it's okay, because then we could go uh, knight to e4 next yes, move. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's why you have to keep the knight on g3 and fight for the light squares, as we were saying. So bishop yeah. d2, knight h5 was suggesting, but knight h5 loses a pawn here, because knight e3 is the immediate threat. So we cannot go Can knight h5 right part? away. Knight h5 was ah, a no, suggestion, yeah. but it loses yeah. some, some material here. Yeah. Bishop d2 is a it tough move to find, stick. I agree, and that's why I, I actually stopped here and asked you guys to look for ideas, um, because this because is about it's understanding, difficult. <laughs> it's difficult, but it's also about understanding the position with white. Um, if we take on f5, white is left without any counterplay, so here white's counterplay is on the light squares. We were talking about this move g5 and uh, what it leaves behind, the drawbacks of the move g5, and there was, those were the, the light squares. We were talking about the yeah. fight for e4, and for that we need the knight on g3. So bishop d2, the tough move to find. Um, if you think about all this, will probably become more natural here. Uh, and then the idea, what's the idea? Everything you were saying before, like bishop d3, we want to play. Uh, yeah, yeah, putting, uh, I'm putting a knight on e4. Knight on e4, knight on h5. Yeah. And we see that white keeps activity. Yeah. yeah. That's very important. Keep some ideas here. What you cannot do in the Benoni is uh, fall into a position where you have no more active ideas, which is what happens after knight takes f5, which we are going to see in a second. I'm going to flip the board. So, Sophie, if you could go ahead and I'm do gonna that flip on the your board side. Well. Yeah. yeah, I have the position. So let's see knight takes f5. After this move, you'll see that black's play is really comfortable. Yeah. Bishop takes f5, bishop d2, and white's position will start to slowly deteriorate here. Now the pawn on g5 is hanging, so h6 looks quite normal. White regroups. Rook a1, but you see that there are no ah. ruptures, no? Rook a1, yeah. what else? I don't know, b4 is not going to happen uh, because of the bishop no. on g7. And it's really uh, instructive how black plays this. So now we have to regroup first, and then we look for more ideas. The main problem that we had before was this queen on e7 that's open for tactical uh, threats. So what do we do? Okay, queen f6. The queen goes to f6 to control some more dark squares. Yeah. First thing to do. Now bishop d3. What would you play here? Mm. Yeah, all the counterplay in the center is gone and this is bad for white. You are completely right this here because they have lost control over the center. That's the, the problem with white's position. Uh, I would consider playing knight e5. Yeah. Yeah. Knight e5. Yeah. Forcing him to do something. No, if they take, we take with yeah. the queen and our queen is on a better square. Um, if bishop c2. Yeah, and the knight is looking nice on e5. What do we do uh, with bishop then... c2? Uh, I think 
putting the knight on c4. Knight c4. Yeah, that yeah. looks good. That looks yeah. really good, knight c4. I like this idea. Knight c4, and then we are taking on c2 and e3, right? Yeah, probably. That looks good. Or just. Yeah, or queen g6. Here, also, queen g6 immediately can be played with the same ideas that to take control over the light squares. You can yeah, play no, he both almost has moves. to take an f5. No, he, I think he has to take, no? Because then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, b5 is also coming soon. So this is quite nice. Bishop e2 was played, and queen g6 happened anyway. Yeah. Just controlling no, a lot of prophylaxis here. Bishop e2 might want to go to h5. We need to pay attention to white's ideas. And then the queen goes to g6 to control all the light squares that uh, were weakened. f3, and what do we do now? Or what would you do? It's just uh, we have so many Something good moves is, here, uh, but the the e three bishop just got a little bit underprotected. Yeah, that's that was true. Before. Um, I, oh, I can play knight c four. Uh, right? I don't think so. Bishop takes. What happens there? Ah, ah, yeah, you are looking at some uh, tactics yeah. there. Mm -hmm. My idea was putting the bishop on d4 in the end. Got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are looking for tactics. You take back the rook and then it's not as good. Mm. Yeah, there will be Maybe two we pieces, could no? For the rook. G4. I was sure that you were going to find this move. I was, I'm was. i surprised you didn't it's find it right away. It's just so much in your is style. It, is so. it g4? Yeah. Uh, this is what yeah, he played I, I was here. looking at e4, but then I was also looking at bishop on e3. But then you know that I always tell you, Sophie, don't don't throw your pawns that much and just pit, <laughs> look at the strategic part, no? So yeah. you're kind of holding back from your tactical side. No, but yeah. here g4 looks really interesting. g4 is, yeah, that's... I think it's one of the main moves to consider. Yeah. And here white takes on g4, which helps us a little bit. But then again, the, the g5 would be open anyway they can try to play king h1 just to get out of the g file but we don't have to take right away on g th on f3 we can but we can also prepare it maybe king h7 prepared for rook g8 i don't know maybe h5 this also looks fine it's a uh, it's a great position to play now yeah it's starting to build up an attack yeah this is everything we wish for here bishop takes g4 and now he plays king h1, and let me see you. What are we going to do with black here? G4, okay, this was a nice, uh, I have to show you this line that someone's suggesting here. G4, f4, and knight f3 <laughs> is a good spot here in the chat. Can I see? Ah, yeah, knight f3 here. Take, take, ah, uh, yeah. If That's they play nice f4 one. and then knight f3. Yeah, this is yeah. Uh, this is a very nice move, so I had to show it. Yeah. Okay, and here, um, after uh, king, king h1. Yes, Sam Shanklin says that pawn cannot move backwards, so always be careful with every pawn move. Yes, he does say that. And he's not the only one. <laughs> Is it too slow to just activate the rooks a little bit more? Like getting the a8 rook into business? You can surely do that and you're not uh, uh, giving up the advantage, but w you should be looking for the active moves first, as usual. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, oops, I think the mouse is again on your face. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, he did make uh, an entire book, two books, no? <laughs> so yeah. Queen h5 is being suggested. I also looked briefly at that. Um, 
I guess the idea is if you if you play put the queen on h8, if white takes the bishop, we take back with the knight and get uh, a mating threat on h2. But if he if he doesn't take, then I don't see that we are threatening much. Yeah, but uh, what other candidate moves? Okay. Queen h5 and bishop takes e2. Bishop takes e2 is the most forcing one, no? the most active one. Bishop takes e2? Yeah. Yeah. First we should consider, no? But, and then they have... Yeah, the... if it takes with anything else but the queen, we could probably play knight c4. I'm not even sure if yes. you want to do that, though, but it's possible. You are right, yeah. But if he takes with the queen, that's... Yes not an option but then he does get on the same line as our rook on e8 mm -hmm. hmm. and then what other active move do we have <laughs> then we can maybe put the knight on g4 then we're threatening the, the oh, that looks pretty good okay let me show you up, up until yeah. here and then you are looking putting... at knight g4 what yeah. else Are there anything? A knight d3? Knight d3, no? Perhaps. Yeah. What happens after knight d3? He, uh, he will move the, the the book. Yeah. And then we we, we could take a pawn. <laughs> Is it How? too greedy <laughs> to take a b2? It's not. <laughs> it's not too greedy. It's not too greedy, it's no. Knight takes b2. Great position. No? Yeah. If queen takes b2, I'm not sure you're not winning more than one pawn. No? Rook e3, and knight yeah, on c3. Is... Yeah. This knight on c3 is pinned. Yeah, so here he goes rook f3, and he's threatening to become active on the king's side. He wants to play rook g3. Yeah. So we still need to be careful. We have to find a good move now before we relax. <laughs> well, we never have to relax <laughs> with, uh, we can play. with the material advantage. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just about to suggest something bad, I think. <laughs> I was just about putting the bishop in d4, but then I think rook g3 would be um, yeah, it would so It would be good. very uncomfortable. Yeah, very uncomfortable. <laughs> so, not moving the bishop. We could play... I'm not sure if it's two... And that's also why we can't take on c3, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rook g3 is coming. Good point. So... Yeah. Then we, we could consider moving the king just to threaten on c3. Sure, but then rook g3 is coming anyway, and, and like, yeah. you're, you're and probably also, under uh, pressure. Now but the knight you have to. Hanging. Yeah, I was going. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. your knight so, on b2 is hanging. Yeah. So this would have to be calculated really well. Yeah. Timan had probably seen this move uh, since he took on e2. Yes. And the chat on YouTube does have it. Let me see what about the other chats. Ooh. How about, how about the chat on chest 24? What do you think? Yes, oh. and now the Twitch insane lonely bear. Yeah. Queen D3 is a really nice defense here. Queen D3. Yeah. Ah. Beautiful. We, th we force him to... I was still in the yeah, attacking mode. The attacking mode. <laughs> this is also yeah. kind of... A <laughs> it's an active move as well. No? We threaten yeah, to take on c3. Uh, and we force the trade of queens. So we will be yeah. safe on the king's side. Nothing nothing happening and our anymore. And our c-pawn is no longer uh, a gunner. It's no, a no. Uh, now it's a promoter. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, now the knight on c3 is hanging, yeah. So they cannot take on h6. There are no tactics here. For example, bishop h6. We take on c3 and the rook on a1 is hanging. Yeah. Then he played bishop d2 in the game. And here simply regroup. King h7, make sure that we're not hanging anything. Rook b1, attacking b7. And here again, he defends uh, really nicely. Rook b8 is an option, but rook e7. What about. Yeah. Rook e7 is better. I mean, looks better at least. Yeah. 
it's slightly more active. You don't put the rook, uh, you don't keep the rook on b8 forever. Knight e4. Okay, how do we defend d6? Mm. We could, uh, no, that's probably too creative. I was thinking about putting the knight on c4 to make like a counter threat. Um, you are right, yes. <laughs> okay, it's not too creative. <laughs> no, because you it's are defending. Yeah. yeah, and I guess he has to put the, what if he uh, moved the bishop to f4? Oh uh, no, the knight, the knight is hanging, the knight yeah. is hanging, of course. The knight is hanging, yeah. Yeah. So now he had to find this move, bishop c3, as not to lose the knight. Yeah. Because g7 is now hanging. That simply takes, and then we trade some more pieces, and now? Maybe uh, doubling the book on the e-file, threatening some checkmate ideas. Yeah, sure, rook e8. I don't see why not. But uh, we can already start pushing the pawns. And this was the idea. Yeah, okay. What's the idea? That after takes, we have two moves here. He took on b5, but then knight a3 um, looks really convincing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that also looks good. We take here. An important thing to note that white cannot take this pawn, thinking that the rook... No, we just take it back. We yeah. just take it back, yeah? Yeah. Problems on the first rank. But the move played by Timan also works. So pawn takes b5, yeah. and his idea here is that uh, when white takes, again, he needs to take with the knight because of rook e1. Uh, now we pin him. Yeah. And this is also winning. He play king h1. Bring the knight to e4 now. He needs to have the knight defended all the time, rook b3. And then our pawn is advancing. Yeah. You play rook b1. It's running uh, fast now. <laughs> it's going fast now. So now yeah. my question was if white can take on c4, what do you think? Can on c3, sorry. Does knight c3 work here? Something we need to check out. No, Why not? <laughs> I mean, I, we, because we uh, we take back with the knight, and then if when he, if he takes the rook on b8, we take the rook on d1, and yes, you are absolutely that, right. That's still winning, right? Yeah, yeah. And everybody on the YouTube chat has it. Nope, he cannot take here because the rook on d1 is hanging, and that's visa. Yeah. So he played knight d4 in this position, but again, this is. Very nice technique huh? from Timan. Have have to say this. Yeah, very much. And against Snydorf, yeah. right? No, this is not. A, is this yes. against Snydorf? Yeah, it's against Snydorf. Yeah. Now rook c1 and now rook d2. He played knight f5 and now takes and c2. Rook c1 and the final question: What do we play here? Uh. We, <laughs> I was just about defending it with rook c7, but maybe it seems like there is something more fun to do. Yeah, rook c7 might be too slow, and uh, maybe you'll give me time to attack your pawn and uh, win it. No? Yes, Steven. Uh, yes, I think I think I might have it. Is it uh, rook b7? And yes, Sophie, everybody's got it. Twi <laughs> Twitch chat, the YouTube chat, and Sophie have seen rook b7. Great. Uh, <laughs> because of the mate again, right? Yes. So he goes here and now rook b1. Well, he still has knight e2. But then the knight gets in with the idea of knight d3 and game over. So there's no time for king f2. No. And that was the great game of today. <laughs> Very nice ideas, no? Great with, the, game. Yeah. with the knight g4, g5, knight h6 and f5. Uh, very nice play by Timan. And now, since we have finished the material for today, uh, I'm open, me and Sophia are open for some questions. We are going to, yes, I am reading the chat. 
And Sophie is also reading the chat, YouTube, Trust24 and Twitch. So please go ahead if you have any questions. We are here to answer. Somehow I feel Black is trying to show how big his brain is by making funny moves that <laughs> win, unlike going easy win. No, I think he played very exactly here, right? Uh, he, he, he found very good moves that didn't allow his opponent any counterplay. Uh, yeah. that's Sometimes the what best this... moves are the funny moves. Maybe, yes, for us, the yeah. mortals, not for Timan. <laughs> yeah. So, is this going to be a regular event? Uh, yes, actually, me and Sophie are having a lesson every yeah. Friday, and it has always been streamed. Uh, and now it will be streamed on Chess24 as well. Yeah, this was a uh, night of Timan, and the year was 1982. I just checked that, 1982, yes. Bueno. Bueno, yeah. yeah. You can say that better than I can. <laughs> but you just look up Nidorf Timan with Timan winning, so you're going to find the game for sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh... So, no, ha, ha. what else? Can you show one or two easy opening traps? Then it should be in the Noni, but I'm not sure if there's like if there Anything. are easy opening traps in yeah. the Benoni. I think it's more like it's slow, slowly try to get... The, <laughs> then try to get some advantage. No? Yeah, it's not the most like quick out of the... like get an attack opening, but it's... Yeah. Uh, well, um, here we're actually looking at Sophie's games, uh, what, what she is playing, because she is... Uh, uh, she's the one having the lesson and we are having uh, personalized training here. So we have been studying the Benoni. This is the fourth lesson that we have in the Benoni. How can you improve your calculation ability? Uh, well, you do need to solve a lot of ta tactics and um, many times a coach can help because they can help you with the thinking process. Uh, some things that we were looking with yeah. Sophie before. Um, yeah, like getting a system or like what you, when I had a hard time finding the move. Oh, I think maybe your mind. Yes. Started. Yeah, when you Can suggested you like, look, take looking at the most forcing moves first. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not Dutch still. <laughs> no, she's not Dutch, but I was going to ask you yeah. how's, <laughs> how's everything in Netherlands? <laughs> no, it started. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Chess, I'm sorry, I haven't read that book, so I cannot really recommend. Okay, what else do we have? Yes, we do see chat. Yes, Benoni does mean son of sorrow. <laughs> it is not a funny name. It's just meant to show that the Benoni, well, is this opening where black is supposed to be worse. And if you, it's the same thing happens in other openings where you give up space and uh, here you have like a sort of worse structure with black and computers will always uh, show that white is winning, but it's not like that. In practice, we see that uh, the Benoni has a lot of uh, venom to it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Amin is asking my rating is um, about 1900. I'm trying to get above 2000 in, in Blitz, but in classical chess, it's a little, uh, it's a bit lower. And I think it's because I've been needing to work on my openings and my Strate strategic thinking and that's really helping having these lessons with Aluka. And we actually started with the strategy, I think, right? And then we've looked at the Maroxi for black. Yeah. Uh, we have also looked a bit at the at the accelerated dragon for black. Yeah. And now Few we're going types of this is so what are your uh, views on Magnus versus the Nagamura game? Do you have <laughs> <laughs> I think they were both super good, so it was a very yeah. tough match. <laughs> yeah. It was very entertaining. It was Which... really uh, intense. I had to go for a run yesterday and I kept, I was like, I have to go. And then I thought, okay, it, now Magnus will win. And then no, then, like, no. Won, and then <laughs> yeah. Magnus won the last run and they had to go to the Fisher Ran to the uh, Armageddon. And I just, um, they kept delaying me. What computer shows Benoni is losing? No, the computer doesn't show that Benoni is losing, but it does show a lot of uh, great advantage for white. Doesn't mean that the computer 
completely understand the, these positions. Uh, it means that uh, blacks, well, they have this algorithm that they use to show the, the evaluation. And of course, in those positions where the D6 pawn is weak, where white has space, it will give a lot, uh, a great advantage for white. Doesn't mean that black is lost. No. Uh, and which lines have we have we covered? We are actually not covering lines per se, but we are looking at games. But we did see different, uh, um, let's say, variations, right? We have seen g3, we have seen e4 directly, we have seen knight d2 today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, they go plus yeah. one, but that's... Also, a few people are interested in, in the Grundfeld. Defense. Are you interested, Sophie, you go... in the Grunfeld? <laughs> um, maybe. Um, um, uh, somebody tried to make me play it once because it's supposed to be pretty dynamic and, yes, and a little is. bit aggressive, right? So maybe. But is it instead of playing, for example, the Benoni? Or is it instead of... Yeah, instead I don't even of, remember. Instead of playing instead the Benoni. Of the well, I think I would like to maybe settle in a little bit more with the Benoni. I think so, we yeah, before we develop. move on yeah. to something else. Yeah. I, I agree and with that. Then also people are suggesting the Benko Gambit, uh, which I never played, actually. Maybe it would be Even uh, though it would be suitable for you, maybe. There are some interesting... Yeah, maybe, ideas. but I'm beginning to have a, a little bit of um, hard times with some of my Gambits. Even though I, I love Gambits, but and I've, I've played them for five years now, but... <laughs> Some of them, I feel like they're starting to be a little bit shaky, um, or it's it's more difficult to win against the very stronger good player players. Maybe yeah, yeah. It's just, probably they know what line to play, and then you sometimes you're just a pawn down, uh, even though I love the activity. Yes, that's uh, that many times happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how to improve for approximately two thousand rated online blitz players? Uh, how to improve the middle game understanding? Oh, this is a. <laughs> I think that's uh, a that's, a, a, that's a lot. Um, a lot of things you could do. Look at games. Um, I think um, a coach would tell you better because if if someone could look at your games, they can uh, see the weaknesses, see what you are doing wrong, and uh, a personalized plan is probably better. But. For example, I recommend many times uh, looking at classical games. That's where you understand a lot. Um, what else can you do? Um, solve positional exercises. Um, look at all this material Just24 has. <laughs> yeah. All these great courses. <laughs> and yes, right. hire me as a coach. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, definitely. I, can, I, can I like that, that suggestion, yes. Yeah, and somebody asked about my classical feeder rating. It's I just looked it up because I haven't played any classical tournaments for two years, so it's it's eighteen hundred and nineteen. But I'm a bit. I, I feel like I should be a little bit better because I'm better at blitz now. But um, you have improved, so that's. Rating. I think I have improved. I just haven't played anything in yeah. in in a long time. Once Sophie succeeds in breaking the barrier, we will celebrate. Yes, we will. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Uh, no more questions here on just when Nice that you're uh, the guy <laughs> downstairs. Nice that you're enjoying the stream. Yes. <laughs> it's every Friday, almost every Friday, but at different hours, Dep right? Because yes, depending on our schedule and just yeah. 24 schedule, we've had yeah. uh, this great match happening lately. So, what else? Uh, what else? Yeah, sometimes Sophie goes on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have to go. Uh, I was uh, thinking about going on Friday, but I'm only I'm going to Norway. Yeah, next you, you said something. Yes. Yeah. So, hope you have uh, have some fun. Yeah, I hope so too. Okay. Well, thank you very much, guys, for joining our stream. Please do check out coaches.com. Uh, you'll find me yeah. there as a coach and you'll find many of my colleagues there, uh, many strong players and many uh, very, very good coaches that will help you a lot with your uh, improving your play. Uh, they will help you with material and they will help you uh, with a personalized plan. So I will see you guys next week, I suppose. Yeah. 
<laughs> thank you very much. And thank you, Sophie. Have a nice thank weekend. <laughs> bye bye. You too.